Uh, I believe you've been provided uh, information on parliamentary privilege and the protection of witnesses and evidence. Um, but for the Hansard record, could I please ask you to state your name and the capacity in which, we, in which you appear? Uh, I'm Peter Ridd from the Institute of Public Affairs. Thank you, Mr Ridd. Um, and I would invite you to make an opening statement, but as per other witnesses, if I could ask you to keep it relatively short as we are behind time, that would be great. Thank you. Uh, I've provided a statement, so unless the senators want to, me to repeat it, I, I forego that right if they want me to. OK, no worries. Thank you, Mr Ridd. Um, we'll go straight to questions then. I can't see who is in Canberra, but I hope to keep the same batting order if Senator Faruqi is there. Yes, I am here. Thanks, Chair. OK, over to you, Senator um, Faruqi. Good afternoon, Dr Ridd. Um, could I start by asking what your profession is? I'm a physicist. I worked for 30-odd uh, years on the Great Barrier Reef as a physicist. A physical oceanographer at the Australian Institute of Marine Science, and I ended up a head of physics at James Cook University until I was fired two years ago. And you've been an academic for a few That's decades right. as well. Um, in your submission, which I have to say I found quite bizarre, you describe academics as a section of society completely unrepresentative of the Australian people and notoriously out of touch with reality. I mean, you yourself have been an academic. Is that a description that you would attach yourself to? Completely, absolutely. Um, my whole background is very different to the average working person out there uh, in the real world. We live. We had a, you know, academics literally live in the um, ivory tower. We don't have the the reality imposed on us, and nor must you at a university. The, the university is a place for people to think and do those sorts of things. And that means that sometimes we're not as um, grounded in reality as we should be. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's why when it comes to things like national benefit and national interest, we're not necessarily the best people. Mm -hmm. So essentially my, my submission is saying that in the final analysis on things like national benefit, people like you, the senators who are elected by the people, who are responsible to the people, have got a better idea than people like me. Mm -hmm. We heard from other academics today who have a very contrary view to you, and I was an academic for a long time, and yes. I, I was very grounded, grounded in reality and still am. Do you believe in the peer review process? Uh, yes, the peer review is a necessary first step, um, but it actually has a huge error rate. So when it comes to the replication crisis, it's now very well recognised that in many fields, peer-reviewed um, literature has close to a 50% uh, error rate. Mm -hmm. So you need it. It's great in the ARC process. The ARC process is a very, very good process. Uh, but it's not perfect, and neither would the ARC and most academics uh, think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, and on things like national benefit, the peers are not necessarily the best people to decide that. Mm -hmm. Um, I just want to go to the veto, the bill that's under discussion yeah. to remove the veto power of the minister. Um, and I know that you are opposed to that bill. Correct. But I'd just like to read out to you a quote from John Roscombe, the executive director of the IPA, mm -hmm. um, the organization that you are representing. Uh, Mr. Roscombe is quoted in the Fin Review on 5th January as saying, the idea of a political veto, a ministerial veto, a government veto on university research is at one level reprehensible. It runs counter to a liberal democracy. So is your view opposed to Mr. Roscombe's? Oh, it, it may well be. I'm just telling you what my view is, that in the end there must be ministerial responsibility. So is um, your view... Sorry, keep going. There must be... No, mm -hmm. that's the end. There must be ministerial responsibility. Uh, from what you're saying, I'm not sure that John Roskin is saying there shouldn't be uh, ministerial responsibility. The veto must be applied very lightly, which it is. Uh, and ultimately, that minister should be held accountable for mm -hmm. the veto by politicians like yourself. And I've heard today uh, a couple of the senators say how bad they think those vetoes were, mm -hmm. and that's a perfectly valid argument that needs to be had. Um, so I just want to make, uh, like, clarify, is your view representative of the IPA or just yourself? No, my, my submission is from the IPA, but remember the IPA is like a university. There are many views within the IPA, and uh, the IPA doesn't stop people having individual views. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. my, my, my submission has the imprimatur of the IPA on it. So it is an IPA submission, an IPA even submission. though the executive director said the veto, even the thought of a veto at one level is reprehensible. At one level, mm -hmm. but not entirely, because mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. end there must be a, a mm -hmm. ministerial mm -hmm. responsibility. So 
when a minister vetoes something, there should be great scrutiny. And, and maybe we do need to look at how that is dealt with. If, mm-hmm. if, there is, if it happens, you know, is it happening in the correct way? Is there a better way for us to do that? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yes. Um, in your submission, you also state that there would effectively be no oversight of the ARC <laughs> by a representative of the taxpayer if this bill was adopted. Um, uh, you are obviously aware that it is the government and the minister, and that has come up again and again today, who have oversight of the overall process. They set priorities, criteria, funding uh, for this very rigorous ARC assessment process. Yeah, that's you right. You don't believe I mean, that's oversight? No, that's not oversight. That's, that's, that's pre-site. Um, look, I'm familiar with the ARC pro- uh, process, okay? I got a, you know, many, many ARC grants when I was a, an academic. We got ma- many millions of dollars. So I know that the process and I totally understand that the minister sets priorities. And one of the things that I'm saying is that ministers should set more priorities with regard to the replication crisis, which has come up before. But that's not oversight. That's setting what the guidelines that the minister expects to be be followed. But but the guidelines are not always followed. In any organisation, the boss, so as to speak, will say, this is roughly what I want done, come back to me, and then he or she will sign off on that. And it's not necessarily that, that what they want done is actually done. And it's completely uncontroversial that in most parts of society... And in most parts of government, the minister is the person responsible, has to sign off, and they have ultimate oversight. And that comes at the end of it. Um, that's it from me. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Faruqi. Um, Senator Carr, did you have thank questions? Thank you very much. Look, I'd like to table an article that appeared in the Saturday paper on the 23rd of November 2019, if I could do that, because I'm going to refer to it. Uh, Certainly, yeah. Um, it's fine. And I'm sure uh, you may recall the article. Uh, I don't, this. so you'll, you'll have to remind me. That's all right. Well, I will. Don't worry. I'll give you every opportunity <laughs> to put a view. Don't worry. Now, um, first of all, you assert that uh, half of the peer review science in uh, much of the ARC funded is wrong. Now, what's the basis of that assertion? Uh, I said that up to half could be wrong in many areas. I'll give you plenty of examples. There have been dozens of articles in the top journals such as Science and Nature on this very issue. Uh, It really became prominent when an article in Science or Nature, I forget which one, Mm -hmm. where drug companies did replication studies on university research and they found that up to 80% of a supposedly high-quality peer-reviewed university research was wrong. People, okay. like John I- people like John I- Ionides of Stanford University and others have been writing on this. It's estimated that up to in the US up to $28 billion a year are wasted because they're based on peer-reviewed literature that ended up being okay, wrong. Okay, Dr. Reid. Can you provide this committee with the evidence to support your assertion that up to half of the peer-reviewed science funded by the IRC is wrong? Uh, I can. Have you read the uh, the footnotes that I provided to you? I have looked at. I just see it's no good making um, broad assertions of that type. It's a profoundly serious allegation to make. Half of our scientific uh, program funded by the IRC is wrong. I I think you should provide a bit more evidence of that assertion than you have to date. All right, I'll give you some more information, but you should start to read the literature on the replication crisis. Let Mm. me give you an example. There's an IRC-funded research uh, on reef fish, um, which about a dozen papers were tested in a replication study and all 12 of them were found to be in error. Right. All right? Again and again and again, when peer-reviewed work is is subjected to replication tests, 
it ends up that very, very roughly about half ends up being wrong. I see. If you are going to deny the replication crisis, you're, you're denying a huge body of evidence that has been accumulated over many, many years. So, I should also point out that the Netherlands equivalent of the ARC, the KNAW, has instituted a fund to do replication studies because of this well-known huge error rate in peer-reviewed research. So the assertion that we have been put to us by the various witnesses, you were in the room when you heard that, um, and I quoted uh, from the article that um, was in uh, that I've tabled, that some 247 uh, papers had been withtracted out of 1.4 million papers produced yep. uh, at that time. Now, do you dispute those figures? No, that's that's retraction, but that's nothing to do with whether the work is correct. So you say that's a different criteria. It's a totally... Retraction is usually when there's fraud, right? Well, this is stuff that's wrong. I have papers in the literature now where there are aspects to them, I've authored myself, which are wrong, OK? Mm. They haven't been retracted. OK. okay? So i put it to you this way. Uh, in the same article I referred to, it uh, quotes you uh, on a speech I think you delivered at Lubin on Holland, where you said, it was, I think it's a lot easier to show the reef is not in trouble than to demonstrate unequivocally that climate change thing is a total myth. If we can suddenly change everybody's mind that actually the reefs is fine, it will get them thinking. But when we're telling them that the reef is dying for so many years, what we're doing, uh, what we are about are these other things we've been told. In fact, what you're suggesting in this uh, speech that you gave in Holland was that if you could undermine the uh, authority and credibility of Australian science in medical research, you could in fact challenge the whole basis of climate change. Uh, Research is that? Uh, have I accurately presented your views at that speech in Holland? Uh, I don't think so. I'm just simply at that speech. I was demonstrating that there is a replication crisis. Uh, it it affect, afflicts all areas from biomedical to psychology. It un undoubtedly will affect the climate change stuff. It undoubtedly affects Great Barrier Reef stuff. And people like you need to be aware of this so that you actually make Thank proper you. decisions based but, but on proper science. But I want to be science. clear about this. Dr. Reid, you have a political agenda here, namely to make a segue between the claims in regard to medical research so that you can demonstrate your view about the evils of climate change research. Is that uh, that's true? That's completely incorrect. Well, why is my, that incorrect? My, my view is that there are, prop, there are fundamental problems in the way we quality assure science. Mm -hmm. It's completely broad. If you, th if you can see that it's in one area, you can see it's in another area, why would it not be in climate change research? Mm -hmm. Why are you against the proposition of better quality assurance oh, I'm not. for climate oh, change? I'm the contrary. Okay, well, no, that's all I'm proposing. You know, you that's know all I'm down, proposing. You, and you well know that I'm not. What I'm interested to know is try to get to the bottom of why it is that you are pursuing this line of inquiry, given your statements, uh, the speech in 2019, that the political objective here was to discredit climate change research and but to, and to use medical research and the replication crisis as a means by, to do so. Is that true or not? No, it's not true. You are completely misrepresenting what I am saying. I am saying there is a replication crisis. Mm -hmm. Read the literature and you'll find that I'm right. Mm -hmm. You seem to have an idea that just because there is a problem in biomedical research, that it doesn't apply to all other areas when they all uh, use uh, the I'm, system I'm quite of peer review. I'm quite a new doctor. And if that, if that problem mm -hmm. is in those areas, it's likely to be in climate science. And that's why I got fired from a university for saying there needs to be better quality assurance of the science. No, see, see, look, I'm full stop. Yeah, all right. Well, I see. So what <coughs> you're actually put to us today in writing is that uh, the ministerial <coughs> veto should be used more extensively, <coughs> more vigorously, is the word you use. That's right, isn't it? Uh, that uh, slightly more vigorously, yes. I think there are many areas where the minister should <coughs> use his, his uh, views on national benefit when he doesn't, yes. Okay, so let me just get this straight. Now, as you know, I'm a former minister for 
you know, research um, uh, and your company with the IPA, a, you know, a demon of the socialist left. Um, how do you feel about a person like me having a capacity to more vigorously intervene in the research I projects? I have no problems with it at all oh. because oh. you are ultimately responsible to the mm. people. Now, look, I voted Green for a dozen years and I voted for Bob Hawke and a whole bunch of others. So don't, are big don't presume that yeah. you think you know what my politics are. No, well, okay? I, I'm not presuming anything. I simply I'm... have the view that scientists do not necessarily have the best idea of what's the national benefit and I would rather a politician, even if I don't vote for them all the time, mm. to have that final okay. say. Okay, well, Dr. Dr. Reed, I, I don't make any presumptions about your personal politics. You're there, well, to you your did, business. actually. Well, no, no, I've asked you a question. How do you feel about the prospect of a left-wing minister having greater capacity to intervene in the political process I, more I vigorously. No I vigorously. have no problems at no, all. No, I'm pleased to hear yes, that. I'm no pleased, problems I'm, at all. I'm delighted to hear that. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure your colleagues at the IPA will be as well. And I'm asking you, though, in terms of you representing the IPA today, yes, and you've indicated yeah. it's a broad church, yes. who funds you? Oh, I'm glad you asked that question, OK? I'm funded by nobody. I... I was offered a position at the IPA and I said, I am not going to be paid by anybody because people keep on asking that question and they impugn my integrity as though I'm corrupt. All right? So I am paid by nobody. When I did, I got these questions when I was at James Cook University too because I, I thought that the reef was fine, okay? Mm -hmm. People would ask, you're in the pay of the coal industry. I never accepted a cent from anybody but my university. Mm -hmm. uh, so well, I am an independent person, more independent than almost any of the people here because I am paid by nobody. I'm delighted to hear that. You see, when the funding arrangements were entered into to support your High Court challenge, who funded that? I was funded by over 10,000 public donations who, who donated one, one, one and a half million dollars and the other 300000 I had to pay for myself out of mine and my, my wife's superannuation. I see. And uh, you're prepared to give us, um, declare exactly who it was that funded the the, the 10,000 people? They're on the GoFundMe site. Go and have a look. I see. So that, and that's the full extent of it, is that's it? That's the full extent of it. Okay, thank you. So I think that um, your imputation that I'm in some, the pay of somebody might require a little no, bit of an apology, don't you think, no, Senator No, I, I, I certainly won't be. I'm oh, a simple, I, I, think I so. See, what I'm as concerned to establish is whether or not you're actually on, on whose interest you are acting, which we're entitled to do here. You are certainly entitled to do that. So I am here because I believe that there are quality assurance problems in science. That's why I said what I said, which ultimately got me fired. It turned out that the High Court, despite going against us in terms of the payout, agreed that the university was wrong to censure me on those comments. I said those knowing that it would jeopardise my career, which it did. I have never accepted a cent from anybody. I'm completely independent. 